Hi, my name is Heidi, and today we're going to spend a few minutes looking at civil cases in JustWare. Civil cases, like other case types, are easily tracked and processed in JustWare. As you can see on my screen, I've performed a basic case search. This report is displaying civil cases listed by case type. This report is real-time and has drill-down capabilities. The drill-down helps to display additional information on these cases. You'll notice as I continue to drill down into this report, additional information is displayed as well as a blue hyperlink that would allow me to navigate directly to this case from here if I desire. I can also find cases by searching. Here you'll notice my quick search allows me to search for cases or case parties. Let's search for the City of Billings. By typing in the City of Billings, you'll notice that a lot of information has been displayed. From here, I can look at the information behind the name record for the City of Billings and any cases that the city might be involved in. You'll notice that those cases are lift, listed here, as well as a blue hyperlink that allows me to navigate directly to those cases. Let's open one of these cases. Let's pick this City of Billings, a tort or personal property claim case. You'll notice that once I open that case, some additional information is displayed on the screen. Across the top of my screen, I have some basic case information. For example, what case type might this be? And what status is this case in? Is this a new case? Is this an informal investigation? or an open case. Keeping in mind, any time you see a drop-down, this is information that is displayed based on your agency's needs and requirements. I also have some dates that I'm tracking, a status date and perhaps a case received date. The additional information that you're seeing here now is my case party and case information screen. This, this screen allows me to track what court this case might be assigned to, what division this case might be assigned to, and any parties that might be assigned to this case. You'll notice that I have several parties listed on this case. Now these can be court personnel, they can be internal agency personnel, and as you see displayed here as well, I can have witness or victim information displayed. An unlimited number of case involved parties can certainly be tracked and traced in my case involved party snap in. For today, you'll notice I have a judge listed, an attorney that's assigned to this case, and I can see for whom this attorney actually represents. An additional attorney or counsel is listed on this case. This is Barry Helfand. You'll notice that he's counsel for Greg Crow, our plaintiff. I'm also seeing an investigator that might be assigned to this case. I could have a paralegal, legal assistant, or support staff as well. I could have a supervising attorney if that were important to me as well. And I also have a respondent and a plaintiff in today's case. You'll also notice if I click this drop down on my case involved parties, I have the ability to have an unlimited number of case involved parties. So today, Let's just continue on with the case involved parties that we already have set. You'll also notice that there are blue hyperlinks based on each one of these party names. This would allow me to see additional information based on the party. Some contact information perhaps, some demographical information if that's important to me as well. As I continue to look at this case, you'll also notice that I have a snap in called matter or allegation. This is the type of case that this case is listed as. You'll notice this is a tort or personal property claim case. <clears throat> I can track an unlimited number of types of cases, or if this were an advisement case, perhaps an allegation or an issue would be the type of case we were tracking. Additionally, I have some other tabs. This tab might be listed as my case notes tab. You'll notice I have several case notes already entered into this case record. They are designated by type, as well as some free form ability for me to take some case notes. You'll also notice I have an attribute snap in. 
this is a really nice place to track additional information that might be pertinent to this case. And again, anytime you see a drop down, this is meant to be your drop down with your needs and your requirements here. This is an unlimited list. It can contain any and all information that you find necessary for tracking this case. Let's move to the events tab. Now this events tab can list both court events and internal events. You'll notice I have several types of events already listed. I have some filing deadlines. I have a scheduling order filed, the, the date and time the complaint was filed. Any and all of these information is certainly up to you and to your, your agency and the types of events that you'd like to track. And again, this can be um, an unlimited list depending on what type of information is important to you. And as I said before, this can certainly be agency information, court information, internal tracking information. It's up to you and how you want to track that information. Let's set a hearing. Perhaps we got notice from the court that a hearing was supposed to be set, or it has been set, for the 30th of October. You'll notice that I can enter and add that information quickly and easily as needed. Additionally, I can involve spe specific people on these events to help track with calendaring and scheduling. From here, I can manually add when the attorney needs to be at the hearing, and I can provide notice to Heidi as well. 10 minutes maybe prior to the event, 30 minutes prior to the event, Heidi can receive a pop-up and even an email notification. Now you saw me do that manually, but that can certainly be set up automatically to help you keep things from slipping through the cracks. You'll also notice that I'm tracking other things besides events. I have a correspondence tab and I have a task tab. Now these snap-ins are available to you should you desire to, or need to use them. You'll notice in my case correspondence tab, I'm tracking simple things like a letter was received, a call was received. And again, these are your items. You can certainly track them if you desire. My tasks tab is an additional tab for me to track case processing. Do I need to notify my investigator that the witness needs to be contacted? Do I need to remind the lead counsel that the timelines need to be determined on this case? Do I need to involve support staff or additional office staff on certain case tasks? I can certainly accomplish that here and track all of that information here. And again, you are seeing me add some items manually when these could certainly be added as automation and this could be done automatically. Finally, I'm going to go and look at the filing cabinet. Now the filing cabinet is really where everything resides. This is indeed an electronic copy of my entire case file. And you'll notice that it's organized in a pretty sensible, easy way to find information. Now the way that I've organized this filing cabinet is I've provided several folders. You'll notice that folders are um, easily named. I can change the names of those folders if I needed to. I can even add a new folder. And you'll notice that I have the ability to um, to add additional information. So let's just call this folder more information or other information. So you can see how easy it is to add a folder. I also have several documents already loaded into this case file. And you'll notice that I have the ability to preview that information. Let's look at this claim, this claim letter. You can see that I have a preview on the right hand side as well as any other information that might be associated with this case. I'm even storing an email within this case record for easy use and to store all information in one location. I also have the ability to perform other functions on these documents and you'll notice as I scroll through them the preview changes as I change documents. As I look at this petition, let's look at this petition document for a moment. You'll notice that I have some other features and functions that I can perform. I could send this document directly to the printer from here. I could click on this envelope icon and I could attach that document to an email. 
And finally, I could perform some redaction or notation on that actual document if I chose. You'll also notice that not only am I storing types of documents, but I certainly can store and find photographs if needed. Now you'll notice this is a Captain America photograph, and again, any types of photographs or media could be stored as well. You'll also notice on this filing cabinet, I have a search box. Now this search box allows me to search the contents of this filing cabinet. I know that there's a photograph in here of Iron Man. You'll notice I just type Iron Man into my search criteria, and I'm directed directly and taken directly to that photograph or that document if that's what I was searching. You'll also notice that I can organize this folder or these folders in my filing cabinet and view them to my personal liking. I'm displaying these on normal size icons. I could look at them in larger icons. I could look at this filing cabinet in a grid view as well. This is especially helpful when I have lots of documents that I need to display at one time. And I certainly can look at the tree view as well, if that's a, a useful view for me. This is a personal setting, and I can determine that based on user. You'll also notice that I have some other functions here. I can add new files to the filing cabinet. I click that and it opened up a, a network drive for me. Let's just add a PDF document. You can see how easy it is to add that document. Now I can do some additional information on this. What type of document is this? Perhaps it's a pleading. Perhaps it's a photograph. Um, is there any additional information? Does this document need review? Is it insufficient or incomplete? Or is it pending review? So I can certainly attach statuses to documents if I need. I can also involve parties on documents. Perhaps this is a document that my investigator needs to review. I can certainly add the investigator's name to this information, to this document, to provide notification now to Mr. Miles that he needs to look at that information or review that document. I can also generate documents from my filing cabinet. And by generating documents, I mean I might have some office templates that I use on a regular basis. And you'll notice I have an icon that I can select. Now I can select which document I want to generate. Let's generate a claim letter, for example. Now again, these are just sample templates. And these templates are meant to be your templates, to be used as you need. You'll notice I just selected claim letter. I'm going to save that case record now and generate that document. Now I generated this document on demand. I selected the document to be generated, and this generation can happen automatically and go directly to the printer if needed. This again is a sample document, and this is a living, breathing Word document. I could make some modifications to this document if I needed to and save that document right into the filing cabinet. Here's my claim letter. If I were to make adjustments to that document or updates to that document when I generated it, that would not affect my template. I can still save that change document into this filing cabinet. Documents can be locked, so no additional changes can be made. And I can also, like I mentioned before, pass documents between users for review and updates as well. Now, the electronic filing cabinet is a place for me to store all of the, the documents that might be associated with this case. You saw me generate a document. You also saw me navigate to a file from my computer. I can also drag and drop documents directly from my desktop or from my email inbox, if that's appropriate. And I can also scan documents directly into the filing cabinet as well. So I have a lot of ability to get documents into this filing cabinet. The filing cabinet can store an unlimited number of documents, so that certainly is up to you and up to your case type on what documents you're storing. There are other features that I can perform, other functions that I can perform from my file, directly from my filing cabinet. I can print documents. I can move documents. I can copy documents to my case file 
or to my computer filing system to a, an, another case record or to um, a, a party's name record. I can copy documents if I needed to. So a lot, a lot happens here in the filing cabinet and you can, you can see that I have a lot of organization and a lot of capabilities here within the filing cabinet. Finally, there are a couple other snap-ins or a couple other tabs that are available to me. You'll notice that I have a judgment or dispositional tab. If this is important information, you can certainly track any junk judgment. I have sanctions or relief that might be um, reached or tracked, as well as any monetary judgments or any monetary amounts that I need to track and report on. And again, all of these tabs, as you saw me move through the tabs across the top here, are certainly up to you, up to your agency, depending on how you want to track that information. But you can see that it's civil specific. I'm tracking information that's important to me and to my agency within a civil case, from events to tasks to all my filing cabinet needs um, as well. Finally, on the very end here is my case summary report. And this simply is just a report that tracks any and all information that's being updated on that case. So it's like a running register of actions where I'm tracking, oh, pardon me, where I'm tracking information that might be associated with that particular case. And finally, um, now that I'm processing these cases, I'm opening them, I'm closing them, I'm processing, I'm issuing documents, I have the capability to report on this information. Now reports can be in a dashboard, in a start page, like I showed you before, my simple case search. Let's go back and look at that. I can, it can also display a calendar. You'll notice my calendar is displayed here with a listing of my cases down below. Now these are configurable. This whole entire system is configurable. We recognize that not all agencies process cases and need to see the same information. So your agency has the capability to um, configure this and have the system configured to your needs. And again, I'll go back to my City of Billings case. This is also a configurable case type. Based on the case type that I have listed here, the information that's displayed below can certainly be um, configured and set to your needs. Now I didn't show you a lot of automation, but keeping in mind that um, Justware has a business rules tool that allows me to perform automation and to perform functions and features that are important to my case type. For example, let's add, and you'll notice I've already added a motion filed. Let's add that again. Let's add motion filed in this case. You'll see the date and time that that motion was filed. Watch what happens when I save that case record. Now an additional item is listed that service is required on that motion. Now it could automatically involve my investigator, for example, who's going to perform my service. And I can track the status of that service. Has it been completed? Was it unable to serve? Etc. So I have the availability now to track all of that additional information. So depending on how you need to track all these cases, what information you need, and what deadlines you need, when is an answer filed, when is the reply due, when is the response due, is there a deposition set, what's the location of that deposition. So you can see I have a lot of flexibility and actually a lot of um, power here to track any and all events that might be based on this case. So as we process this case from beginning to end, you'll notice that I'm adding events all the way through judgment and all the way through any dispositional information as well, if that's important for you to track. I can also report on any piece of information that I've been tracking on my cases. Remember how we listed cases by their, their type? I could certainly list cases by their statuses. Additionally, I can have other reports. This is a very graphical report. So you can see this is my age of active pending caseload. So I have my case types listed here, like we did in our first report. And any additional information is stored behind that. And again, this is a drill down report. I can drill deeper into those cases. Recognize that. There's my litigation cases again. 
and I have the availability now to present this information in any feature or form that is required. So not only can I process cases and all of the details within those cases, but I can report on those cases as well. Thank you so much for your time today, and I hope you learned a little bit about processing civil cases in JustWare.